Hi everyone, I'm Jillian Capodici. I'm happy to be here today coming live from our exciting conference room at the Department of Urology. Um, I actually specialize in integrative medicine and acupuncture and nutrition, but today is, well not today, but the whole month is Men's Health Month. So what we wanted to do is talk with you a little bit about some of the common men's health concerns that come in. And we're going to break it down for you in a couple categories. But before I start, I just want everyone to know that men's health is some, definitely something that needs some awareness because I hate to use generalizations, but in general, men are less uh, likely to go to their doctor than women are, um, and they kind of wait until something is wrong. I think the way that we need to start thinking about this is to know that education is power, that basically health is one of your biggest assets, and you don't want to wait until it's depleted to go in. So make sure that you do your routine checks, um, get your PSAs, et cetera, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. We had a lot of questions come in ahead of time, so what I did is I kind of put them together into four categories. The first one is peeing. So that's exciting, everyone pees. The second one is, what's going on with my external genitals? The third one is, are there some things that I need to think about with regard to my sexual health and reproductive health? And then finally, just some other just general <coughs> cancer awareness, urologic cancer awareness tips, and some general men's health things. So what's our first main category? So let's start with peeing. OK. So peeing, or urinating. This is something that we all do, male or female or transgender. Anyhow, um, one of the things that we want to look out for in urology is a couple of things. Color, pain, and flow. Those are the three things to remember. What is the color of my urine? Do I have any pain when I'm urine, urinating or after I'm urinating? And what's my flow like? So color, normal color of urine should be like a light straw or like a light yellow color. If it's really clear, you probably drank too much water. If it's though on the other spectrum where it's like reddish or brownish, that means it's a sign of blood. So that is never good. So if you see any signs of blood in your urine, that's definitely a time that you have to go to the doctor and say, and say, give a urine sample and talk about that. The second thing is pain. Do I have pain when I'm urinating? Most of us don't think about it because we're peeing six, seven, eight times a day that we don't have any pain. But if you have any pain, whether it's in your urethra, which is in the penis, or whether it's in the bladder or above the bladder, then that could also signify an issue. And you could have pain during peeing or after peeing, which is the most common. And then the third thing is, is my flow OK? Now, usually this is a question more for older men, because you've probably heard of something called the prostate gland. And often the prostate gland gets enlarged and can block the flow. But the flow can be interrupted by other obstructions as well, like a big stone in your bladder or something we call a stricture, which is like a narrowing of the urethra. So how is my flow? Does it sound, is it good and robust? Um, or is it dribbling? Is it shooting out to the side? These are things that you might want to visit your urologist or general uh, practitioner for. And what are some things men should look out for with regard to their external genitals? OK, external genitals. I wanted to start with uh, showing you a diagram. So this is like what we call a sagittal section. If you cut yourself in half like this, if you're male. Um, and you can look here at the bottom. So this is the bladder here, okay? and the bladder is basically storing, store, storing urine that's coming from the kidneys, and the kidneys are in the retroperitoneum, like in the back, in a sense. And there's a tube that goes down, and the urine goes into the bladder. And then you have the urethra, which is the tube that brings urine and semen out through the penis. And this is the, the, the when we're talking about external genitalia for male, we're talking about the penis, including the shaft and the head of the penis. We're also talking about the testicles and the scrotum, which is the skin that surrounding it. So the testicles are here, and the testicles' main function is to um, make sperm. Okay, And then the area also underneath, this is the rectum here. This area is called the perineum here. And then this area above the bladder is called the suprapubic area. So external genitals, and the reason that I mention this is because it's one of the things that we have a lot of complaints in the office for. So men will sometimes come in and say that, I'm having an abnormal discharge that's coming from the tip of my penis. I might have a curve in my penis when it's erect, and this is something that I haven't seen before, and this is something that I need to, to address. I might be doing a testicle exam or a scrotal exam and find a little lump, or perhaps the whole testicle is swollen. Um, or I might have some pain or pressure in the area of uh, the tip of the penis or the perineum. 
And those things can refer to a lot of different things. Again, and I actually meant to say this before, as a total disclaimer, this is not a health consult. This is just giving you some information. So please go see your urologist or general practitioner. Uh, this is just raising awareness to talk about some of the things. But anyway, back to some of the things that can cause urogenital pain for men. Um, a lot of things. Any abnormal discharge coming from the tip of the penis usually signifies some sort of infection. So it could be an STI, which is a sexually transmitted infection. It could be a UTI. Men also get UTIs. It's not just females that get UTIs. Or it could be a prostate infection. Um, any curve in the penis, especially when it's erect, is, is something called Peyronie's disease. And there's definitely not a lot of awareness about that um, condition at all, but it's something that, that a lot of our faculty members are studying and treating in our department. Sometimes one could have a lump or a bump on this in, feel in the testicle and scrotum, and it could often be benign, meaning that it could be nothing. But especially in younger men, we do suggest that they do testicular self-exams because lumps or bumps in the younger men could also be a sign of testicular cancer. And then finally, pain. There's a lot of talk about, or maybe not as much, about pain in pelvic pain in men. Um, we hear about pelvic pain in females, but pelvic pain in males is actually almost just as prevalent as pelvic pain in females. It's just that we don't talk about it that much. And it can be in any of those areas that I described. It can be at the tip of the penis, which is usually kind of a referred pain. It can be in that perineum area uh, beneath the scrotum and the anus, and that also could be a referred pain or could be something that has to do with what we call pelvic floor muscle dysfunction or tight pelvic, pelvic floor. Or you can have testicle pain. It can be in one or both. It can shift back and forth. So there are a lot of conditions um, that that males might have where they have to address and see a urologist and, and talk about potential uh, concerns with external genitals. And what are some of the main urologic signs and symptoms to be aware of with regard to sexual health and reproduction? Okay, so this is also, again, in urology we have all these different specialties, so I'm trying to cover lots of different things within this uh, short session just to give you a sense of all the, the men's health concerns. And one of them is definitely um, with regard to sexual function, but it's also about for, um, for sexual health and making sure that everyone gets tested for STIs if they're sexually active. The most common ST, STIs are gonorrhea, chlamydia, syphilis, and HIV. It means also that everyone should use condoms that are sexually active and on a preventive basis make sure that they're getting checked. Um, this also, again, for males, is regardless of your sexual orientation. So it's really important for straight men, gay men, bisexual men, um, men who have sex with men to all get tested. It's not just falling on the burden of one category or one sexual orientation. Um, with regard to libido and erectile function, this is again another common reason that men actually do finally go to, to their urologist is because they're having an issue with sexual function. And again, this is kind of a broad area. It could mean anything from my libido is waning or I feel my energy is low to, you know, I'm having more difficulty um, obtaining a, an erection before or sustaining it before. And again, these are normal things that can happen and it could be a host of, of potential reasons that we can deal with both from a lifestyle perspective and from a medication perspective as well. Um, finally, if um, as far as family planning is concerned, this is another area that falls in urology and that's important with men's health. Um, again, if you are trying, a couple that is trying to conceive, um, what we call male infertility factor is something that can account for anywhere from up to 20 to 40% um, of, of chance of having a male factor contributing to the infertility. Um, so again, if one is doing family planning, it's really important to, to see a urologist to get a sperm analysis, which is very simple to do, and to go through some general questions because there, there could be some medications that one is taking. There are some lifestyle factors that contribute to uh, sperm health, like smoking or even some prescription drugs. So these are important things that um, definitely need to be assessed. And to wrap up, what are the main prevention tips for urologic cancer risk reduction? So it, for, for urologic cancer, our main, the main cancers are prostate, kidney cancer, bladder cancer, and testicular cancer. Our chairman, uh, Dr. Tuari, is going to talk about prostate cancer in his Facebook Live. 
Um, as we know, um, one of the things that's most important from a preventive standpoint is PSA screening, which is a blood test, taking something called PSA, which is a prostate-specific antigen. It's a protein that's measured in the blood, and it can be an indicator that, that um, uh, that we use for cancer is not cancer specific, but it is something that helps to screen. And doing a rectal exam um, is also part of the typical screening for prostate cancer. And that usually begins around age 40 to 45, um, depending on a lot of different factors. The other two cancers I wanted to mention um, from a prevention standpoint are kidney and bladder cancer. And those, one of the highest risk factors um, for developing those cancers is tobacco smoking. So tobacco cessation, whether you're going to use uh, nicotine replacement, uh, prescription drugs, even acupuncture, um, combination of things, um, stopping smoking is really important not only for your cardiovascular health but actually also for your uh, kidney and bladder health because those are the biggest risks for those two types of cancers. Um, the last thing I think I wanted to just mention is, aside from all this, you know, one of the things is we really think that urology is actually a great place for men's health because if you think about all the complaints that I just mentioned, peeing and my external genitals and my sexual health, those are the main reasons that you're going to go to the doctor in the first place. However, some of the other things that are kind of looped in with this that men, again, you hear and hear about are, are, are obviously like heart health, diabetes screening, high blood pressure. Um, high cholesterol, but in a sense, everything is connected. We're not just walking prostates, we're not just walking hearts, it, there's a whole person there, and so these things are connected. So from that aspect, from a urologic perspective, we know that some, so, sometimes um, difficulty obtaining erection um, in men could be a sign, what we call a harbinger of a cardiovascular disease, because the smallest blood vessels are going are in the penis. So sometimes they are very connected. And one of the other things that I think is really important that is still somewhat overlooked but needs to be talked about more with men's health in general is just talking about mental health. And I think that that's a really important thing to mention. Um, men have also suffer from anxiety and depression and other mental health um, disorders or conditions. And that really, I think, should be discussed as a whole part of men's health, again, not just the heart, not just the prostate, et cetera. Um, so I hope that this answered some of your questions and that you enjoyed the talk and that you learned a little bit about anatomy and that you feel empowered to, to be proactive and um, knowledge is power. Thanks.